time seek change, so must we that the new time requires new response to new challenges. <laughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuhu. Glad to be with you once again on the program as you answer the call. I am Rashida Abubakar, your regular host. As the world takes measures to contain another deadly COVID-19 variant, Omicron, the federal government is not left out in this drive. It is intensifying efforts to ensure that Nigerians are protected through vaccination. Don't hesitate to get yours now. Once again, welcome to the program as you answer the call. We continue our review of the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, in the year just ending. And tonight, we are focusing on a one-day seminar organized by NACON for information officers, public relations officers, spokespersons, and head of media of state pilgrim welfare boards. And as usual, we have our regular segments, such as the NACON News Diary, Making the Hajj, the Quiz, and more. All this shortly. Keep watching and stay tuned. Every Muslim is a potential pilgrim. To make the Hajj possible for the Ummah, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, is running a Hajj saving scheme through Jai's Bank. The scheme allows depositors to gradually save for the Hajj over a period of time. Registration into the Hajj saving scheme is ongoing for all Muslims. Muslims wishing to perform Hajj can be enrolled into the scheme through the following outlets. NACON offices across the country, state pilgrims welfare boards, agencies and commissions, any branch of Jai's Bank in the country. Enrollment can also be done directly by logging into dedicated sites for the scheme. Let's participate and support the Hatch Saving Scheme for better Hatch services. Thank you for staying with us. Let's begin the program with the news diary as presented from our studio. <laughs> Islamic scholars have been advised to intensify prayers for Allah to save the world from COVID-19 pandemic. The Executive Secretary of the Bauchi State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, Imam Abdurrahman Ibrahim, made the plea during an interactive session with Islamic clerics in Bauchi. While hoping for the 2022 Hajj exercise, Imam Abdurrahman said prayers and compliance with COVID-19 measures are the only solution to contain the pandemic. The Executive Secretary called on the Islamic scholars to assist in sensitizing people, particularly intending pilgrims to embrace laid-down protocols on COVID-19. In the meantime, as part of precautionary measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in Haram Mosque, the Saudi Ministry of Hajj and Umrah has imposed a 10-day waiting period between Umrah permits. The 10-day waiting period means that pilgrims will no longer be allowed to perform consecutive Umrah rites one after another. The newly announced regulation aims at preventing the spread of coronavirus in Haram Mosque, where social distancing measures and mask-wearing requirements have been reimposed. The announcement further said that foreign pilgrims may avoid quarantine if they have been fully vaccinated with a vaccine approved by Saudi Arabia. Similarly, the Hajj and Umrah Ministry has said that the Kingdom will only allow pilgrims aged between 18 and above who have been vaccinated against COVID-19 or have recovered from it to embark on the pilgrimage. Also, all pilgrims must reserve a spot using the Itmarna or Tawakalna application for entry permit. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you are still watching as you answer the call, a public enlightenment presentation that keeps you abreast of the activities of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACON, and other Hajj-related matters. 
The National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, has identified strong and effective communication as very central to the successful implementation of heart policies and programs. It is in line with this that the Commission organized a one-day seminar to enhance the capacity of key stakeholders in the heart industry on information management. The event was of the major activities of NACON in the year under review. For details of this and more, stay tuned for the next segment, Spotlights. Keep watching. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. So it means as much as possible, everybody in the world should be vaccinated. On Tuesday, the 6th of July, 2021, the National Heart Commission of Nigeria, NACON, organized a one-day seminar for information officers, public relations officers, spokespersons, and heads of media of state pilgrims' welfare boards, commissions, and agencies. The seminar took place at the conference hall of the Hatch House with the theme, Heart Communication and COVID-19 Pandemic. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the event, NACON chairman, al Zikun Lakule Hassan, said the choice of the theme is apt considering the challenge facing the Hajj industry. The theme of this event, Hajj Communication and COVID-19 Pandemic, is among the topical issues of interest in the field of Hajj today. This brings to mind the raw fear of COVID-19, which made Hajj impossible for international pilgrims for two seasons running. Still under this fear of the pandemic, we were subliminally reminded of how important communication is in determining what international programs were to plan for or what not to. We all agree that information sharing is central for clear understanding of issues and for arriving at collective solutions. When partners in an industry have access to accurate, timely and relevant information from a broad range of sources, they become well informed and equipped to tackle obstacles and facilitate efficient service delivery. It was also that this seminar was organized as a medium to debate upon problems of communication in this changing world of the pandemic and how it affects our mutual interests. The ultimate goal here is to gain deeper understanding of the challenges and arrive at solutions that will remain applicable at our official endeavors. The NACAN chairman noted that the seminar is expected to equip information managers in the states with the knowledge of how to address challenges bedeviling had administration. This seminar was organized as a medium to debate upon problems of communication in this changing world of the pandemic and how it affects our mutual interests. The ultimate goal here is to gain deeper understanding of the challenges and arrive at solutions that will remain applicable at our official endeavors. This seminar is not intended to be a lecture, a lecture session, but an interactive party of minds. It's so that by the end of the seminar, participants should be able to appreciate the importance of media collaborations between National Arch Commission and State Pregnant Welfare Board through commission stroke agencies necessity of sourcing information from the right channel against fake news, need for public relations and information officers to be abreast with happenings in Saudi Arabia, technological innovations, COVID-19 protocols, and their consequence to programs in order to sensitize them. The role of the national medical team in the face of COVID-19 pandemic and how we can help in projecting the right image. al Zikula further talked about the plans adapted with respect to the cancellation of the 2020 and 2021 Hajj for international pilgrims. Importance of managing expectations and the backlash of two failed Hajj season for which a large number of pilgrims have registered. Imperative of high saving scheme option. Now that global economy is experiencing a systematic slowdown due to the COVID-19. We are also aware of 2020 and 2021 Hajj cancellation, cancellations for international programs. Our collaborative effort with the State Board Chief Executive Forum provided a unique platform 
for exchanging ideas where we reaffirmed our commitment to the well-being of our intending pilgrims. We came up with the following options as we fought for those who have made high deposits since 2019. Those who wish to be refunded their deposits should apply for a refund through their state boards. Those who wish to roll over in anticipation of next hatch can do so by retaining their monies with the state welfare board or migrate their monies to, into the high savings scheme with the Jais Bank. The advantage of migrating into the high savings scheme is that subscribers have the advantage of gaining profit as they await the pilgrimage. The reality of our time is that a queen system is unavoidable. With the backlog of two consecutively cancelled our seasons vis a vis limited slow allocation system of the host country. In their separate remarks, Nakan Commissioners of Policy, Personnel Management and Finance, Al Haji Nura Hassan Yakase, and that of Planning, Research, Information, Statistics, and Library Services, Sheikh Suleiman Momo, echoed the importance of the seminar. We really need a seminar of this nature so that at the end of the day, you as an image makers and spokesperson for your various welfare boards, you should be able to disseminate to the Muslim Ummah and also the people in the industry as reason why this happened and what can we do to make sure that at least we have limited, you know, it affected the impact on the industry is limited. I am therefore confident that any communique reached at the end of the seminar shall be disseminated accordingly to the end users. The advent and existence of COVID-19 pandemic is an exceptional challenge in Hajj exercise for all the stakeholders. But as Muslims, no matter how tough it may be, the present predicament could be seen as an opportunity to strengthen and reawaken our faith with the Almighty Allah. Resource persons led the interactive sessions through their different presentations on the following subject matters. Channels of communication between Nakan and the states, National Medical Team under COVID-19, projecting the right image. Enrollment into Heart Saving Scheme. Managing expectations under the constraints of COVID-19 and proper channels of sourcing news. And constraints on information dissemination in the Hatch industry and solutions. The program is at the center of it all. And how we reduce the morbidity and mortality, that is um, sickness over there. Our debt is the objective, is the major aim of um, the national medical team. Their specific objectives include one common, uniform, harmonized approach to medical services provision, an operation for pilgrims, and one common national medical team in line with global best practices. It is very important as Hajj managers for the intended pilgrims to understand and to have a full, full understanding of the message you are passing across, it is important you use what we call, you employ grassroots broadcasting. To find some crisis here, it is very important as public affairs officers to tackle issues before they snowball into crisis here. If we allow an issue to become a crisis, then we'll pay more. We have uh, three choices of states. Um, when I say choices of states, your states of departure. So the system provides for that. Um, why are we doing that? By the time the system is doing seat allocation, if the seats in Oshun State is filled up, the system will consider me for Lagos State. If Lagos is filled, it will consider me for Abuja. Being interactive, the session generated comments, observations, and questions from participants. Um, my input is, I was one of the participants in Bini on this very hard saving scheme. And actually, in my state, we are able to make sure that we carry this organization down to the grassroots. At least in each of the local government, we started from us, all the imams, we called them for a meeting. After then, we visited all the mosques in the state. 
But what I want to say is there's a lot of challenge in that the Jais Bank and the NICOM with the states need to collaborate very well. Still at the seminar that took place during the year under review, there was panel discussion at which participants shared their experiences as information managers. Musa Obandawaki, a director at Nakon Media Unit, led the panel discussion. Sometimes we do face challenges with some management staff. Because as an information officer, you must work hand in hand with your executive. Because it's from him you can get some information in order to enable you to disseminate. And also, it's from you he will hear the minds of the public. Head of Media Division at NACON, Hajja Fatima Mustafa, and the coordinator Hatch Savings Scheme, Dr. Liu Tanko, gave the closing remarks and presented participants with a certificate of attendance. <laughs> the participants appreciated NACON for organizing the seminar, saying it could not have come at a better time. This is a very important seminar, and I feel like it shouldn't be neglected. It should be done like more often because like we've learned a lot from today and we know that information is key so we need more of this in fact this gathering i was overwhelmed when i came i came late but in fact what i gathered i have a, a lot of experiences because i met colleagues we deliberated issues from the management of narcon they gave us all the assurances. So I believe all the PROs here will go back to, to, their, to our various state with good uh, uh, information and we're going to disseminate it to the general public. The gathering is very important and educative and upon up we uh, get to know each other and we rub minds. It's very, very educative. I have learned a lot. There, is a lot. there are a lot of things that my mind didn't even go there. But being here, I, I, I at least uh, I have gotten a lot of things and I'm very sure it's going to help me in my work. At the end of the seminar, resolutions that will help information managers carry out their work efficiently were reached and adapted. As we go into the year 2022, NACON is expected to come up with more plans for effective information dissemination and management in the Hajj and Umrah industry. <laughs> Masha Allah, the program is as you answer the call. Coming up next is making the hatch. To embark on hatch, intending pilgrims have to fulfill certain conditions as laid down by Islam. These conditions include, among others, being a Muslim and have attained the age of puberty, to be of sound mind, have means to undertake the journey, and being physically fit to perform the rites of Hajj. So all your financial responsibilities are cleared. On making the Hajj tonight, Imam Tajuddin Muhammad Bello Adigun explains these conditions. Well, among the conditions that makes Hajj to be acceptable is for one to be a Muslim. There is no compulsion on a Muslim to go on Hajj. It is only a Muslim that is entitled to perform the ritual of Hajj. Being in a state of maturity or adulthood, as well as mentally stable, are other conditions for those interested in performing the Hajj. Secondly, is on those who actually are signed, those who are having senses, not somebody mentally affected. A mad person has no Hajj. It is only those who are sin that you go on Hajj. Uh, one must be mature too. Maturity here. But if a child less than the age of maturity will go to Hajj, yes, Rasulullah Sallallahu recommended it, he's going to have the word, but he did not discharge the real Hajj that actually Allah made compulsory on him. He's going to be given the word, and the mother or the father who took him there will have the word, but that does not make that child he could have done his real hajj. After maturity, there is a hajj that he or she actually must perform. Furthermore, persons suffering from terminal ailments are not allowed to perform the hajj. Also, an individual 
will also have to meet all the financial expenses required before embarking on Hajj. It must be on somebody actually who is a healthy, somebody who is not healthy, uh, who is affected with any kind of sickness, whether coronavirus or any other vices or any other sickness that will make him not to be able to perform Hajj, then Hajj is not compulsory on him. Uh, it's a condition that you will be healthy. Also, it's a condition that you must have the ability financially. If you are matured, you are a Muslim, you are not affected, you are strong, but you don't have the money. Islam did not say you should go and steal. If you go and steal other government money or any other money from anybody, that has actually is not accepted. It should be from actually a legal source. One important condition associated with women is the need for them to have a mahram or guardian to accompany them for the Hajj. Uh, a mahram is somebody who is related to her or who is her husband. Her husband, if she's married, in fact, is the key mahram that she accompany her on Hajj. Where that is not actually possible, her father can be her mahram. Her son, who is matured, can be her mahram. Her senior brother, consanguine or jamain, that is half brother or full brother, even from the same mother, can act as her mahram. Somebody actually who by Islamic teaching cannot marry her and is matured and related to her in the simple definition of her mahram, except of course her husband, which we have identified earlier. Now, this is a condition as far as Islam is concerned. Even though there are scholars who have softened it to be a group of individuals coming, of women. For instance, if women are coming from Abuja, and there are about 1,000 women, and they are going to be in the same group, that group can survive the position of Maharam, where the Maharam is not to be there. And I think actually that is okay Islamically and is acceptable. Acquiring knowledge on how to perform the Hajj is another condition intending pilgrims are required to fulfill. In addition to these, Imam Tajuddin stressed the need for intending pilgrims to engage themselves in exercises in order to be physically fit to stand the rugos of the Hajj. Alhamdulillah, up next is the quiz. Welcome to the quiz segment. The question in the last episode was, what major lesson does the Talbiya teach? The correct answer is oneness of Allah. The winner is Adisa Abdusamad from Oshogbo Oshun State. He provided the answer ahead of others. Adisa Abdusamad will be contacted on how Nakan will reach him with the prize he won. A quiz winner will get 25,000 Naira cash prize. This is part of Nakon's effort in social investment in Nigeria. Now to the quiz for this week and the question is, which mosque is referred to as Masjid al-Taqwa? I repeat, which mosque is referred to as Masjid al-Taqwa? Text your answer to the number showing on your screen. The winner will be the first person whose correct answer is received. All answers should carry the name and location of the sender. Good luck and happy viewing. Once again, good luck to you. Before we round off the program, we take some messages from our viewers, including questions seeking clarification. <laughs> Rabia Adamu from KB State sent in the first message. It reads, Assalamu alaikum. Put us to Nakon Chairman Alayhi Zikrullah Kule Hassan and the entire staff of the commission for their tireless work to enlighten the Ummah on Hajj and Umrah. I also appreciate Nakon for introducing various projects for the development of the Hajj and Umrah industry. The Amir of Muslim Student Society of Nigeria, Auchi Polytechnic Branch, Lukman Brema, sent the second message. It says, we want to use this medium to appreciate Nakon management for its hospitality during our excursion to Hajj House. We pray to Almighty Allah to reward you all. Viewers seeking clarification or have questions to ask on any matter relating to Hajj and Umrah management and operations can do so through this program. Relevant officers will be contacted to respond appropriately. We also welcome your messages, comments, observations and questions through our mobile number and other social media platforms. Remember, 
You can stop the spread of coronavirus by complying with all preventive measures. Let's support our government in the fight against coronavirus. That's it on this edition of the program as you answer the call. Join me same time next week for another package. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Labbaik, labbaik, Allahumma labbaik Inna alhamda wa ni'mata Laka wal mulk La sharika laka labbaik